The Denver Broncos last season finished in last place in the AFC West with a record of 7-10. and Now, coaching and quarterback play is what held this team back in 2021. So, you hire Nathaniel Hackett as your new head coach, and he has a lot of promise. This is somebody who is a player's coach. Players love to play for him. They always have good things to say about him, but... I don't know how good he is as a play caller. Because remind you, the last time Nathaniel Hackett called plays was during his time with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And outside of that long year when the Jacksonville Jaguars went to the AFC Championship game and they lost to the New England Patriots, his offenses in Jacksonville haven't been all that great. So in Denver... He wants to have a explosive offense that takes a lot of chances down the field. And you bring in Russell Wilson in a trade with the Seattle Seahawks, who happens to be one of the best deep ball throwers in the NFL. Now, a good amount of people out there think that Russell Wilson has regressed. Now, even if you are one of those people, I still think that we can all agree with the fact that Russell Wilson is still a top 10 quarterback. And if you don't think that Russell Wilson is a top 10 quarterback, then I don't really know what to tell you. But I don't think he has regressed that much to the point that you shouldn't view him as one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL still. In Seattle, he never really had a good offensive line. Yeah, he had a pretty good core receivers to throw to, but with him being on the Broncos now... I think that this is the most talented team that he has played with in over the last couple of seasons because Denver's offensive line is okay. I don't think it's great, but it's not bad. It could go either way. Either this offensive line is going to play really well or it's going to play pretty bad. I don't really think there's going to be an in-between. Now, you look at the running back position. I love Javante Williams. I think he's going to have a breakout season. You still do have Melvin Gordon back there. He's also going to be a factor, but I expect Javante Williams to get the bulk load of the carries by the midway point of this season. The wide receiver position is absolutely loaded. You got Tim Patrick. You have Cortland Sutton, who a lot of people really sleep on because Cortland Sutton wasn't really utilized all that much in this offense like he should have been because you had Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. And Teddy Bridgewater, as we already know, is a quarterback who doesn't take a lot of shots downfield. So with Russell Wilson at the helm, I think that a lot of people are now going to start to realize just how good Cortland Sutton is. He's one of the most talented wide receivers in the game. You also have Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy. This is somebody who was a former first round pick out of Alabama. He's one of the best route runners in the league. If he can stay healthy, I think he also could be in for a really monster season. So my best case scenario for the Denver Broncos this year is going to be 12 and 5. The defense should still be pretty good. Even if it does take a slight step back, I don't think they're going to go from one of the best defenses in the NFL to one of the worst. Even though they lost Vic Vangio, they do bring in a defensive coordinator who comes from that coaching tree who's pretty much going to run the same defense that Fangio ran. So I still think that this defense at worst should be top 15. But I'm expecting this to still be a top 10 defense somewhere around that range between 7 and 10. Offensively, this offense should be able to put up a lot of points. It should be really efficient because the fact that you're going to have a really solid run game and also the fact that once you get that run game going, you're going to be able to stretch the field by utilizing play action. So if everything goes right, the offensive line plays good, the defense doesn't take a major step back and Russell Wilson continues to be the Russell Wilson that we have seen over the last couple of years and he doesn't continue to regress the way that many people feel that he has over the last couple of seasons I think that the Broncos could be one of the best teams in the AFC and maybe they they potentially could win this division now my worst case scenario is going to be 6 and 11 and you may ask JT, why is the floor so low for you on the Denver Broncos? You know, why do you think that Denver potentially could only win six games? Well, like I mentioned earlier, the offensive line is either going to be really good 
or it's going to be below average. And I think in this division, if you're trying to have a shot at winning this thing, you have to be able to have consistent offensive line play week in and week out. I don't know if this offensive line is going to give you that. Another thing is that Nathaniel Hackett has improved that he is a good play caller. During his time in Jacksonville, outside of that long, good season that they had, his offenses have been average at best. And you can say, well, JT, he had Blake Bortles at quarterback. He didn't really have a lot of talent in Jacksonville. I can understand that. But I still think that the jury is out on just how good of a play caller Nathaniel Hackett is. And to be quite honest with you, I don't really think that he's all that great. Now, it does help that he does have Russell Wilson as his quarterback. And if you have an elite quarterback, he's going to make the play caller look really good because he can turn a bad play into a good play. But I do feel that there are going to be some games that the Broncos are going to be in and Broncos fans are going to say, you know, what was up with that play call? You get what I'm saying? So 6-11 and 11 is my worst case scenario simply for the fact that Nathaniel Hackett is unproven as a play caller. And we don't know just how consistent this offensive line is going to be. Now the defense, I'm not really worried about. I think their defense is pretty solid. I don't think that their defense is going to be the reason why things could end up going left. However, my overall record prediction for the Broncos this season is going to be 7-10. and 10. Now, I may be overanalyzing the Denver Broncos a little bit too much. Maybe I'm not giving Nathaniel Hackett enough credit as a play caller, but I'm somebody who I have to see it to believe it, okay? I've got burnt in the past by teams who have hired first-year head coaches who haven't been play callers in the past, for the team that they previously were on the staff of and with the Green Bay Packers Nathaniel Hackett was really just responsible for you know helping with the game plan he didn't really have that much of a role in the Green Bay Packers offense when it came to play calling duties it also helps with the fact that Green Bay also had Aaron Rodgers at the helm at quarterback and I don't want to compare him to Adam Gase but you got to remember when Adam Gates was calling the plays as the OC for Denver, he had Peyton Manning. And then he became the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, and their offense was never better than maybe above average one season. So for Nathaniel Hackett, you know, with him calling plays in Jacksonville, that still is in my head. And you may say, JT, that was a long time ago. You got to get over that. I understand that. But that's the last time we've seen him as a play caller. Now, of course, he's probably going to tweak some things. He's going to make some adjustments because he's going to have a way better personnel on offense compared to what he had during his time with the Jaguars. But I'm just not really all that big of a believer in Nathaniel Hackett when it comes to the play calling, and I think that's what's going to hold the Denver Broncos back this season. That's why I have them at 7-10. and 10. And of course, you can say that I'm overanalyzing Denver. I'm not saying that they're going to be a bad team. I just feel that they're going to have some games in there that they're going to end up losing. And you're going to say, dang, like, how did they lose to this team? Similar to the L.A. Chargers last year. Remember when they had that surprising loss against the Houston Texans late into the year and everybody was like, how did they lose to the Texans? I think you're going to see a couple of games in there that the Denver Broncos are going to lose late in the season to teams that, you know, they would be favored to beat. And I think that's what's going to cost them. I still think that this team is going to be fairly competitive. I just think that, you know, with the fact that Nathaniel Hackett hasn't really proven to be an effective play caller, I think that's what's going to hold the Broncos back this season. That's why I have them at 7-10. and 10.